car, man. We have arrived at Porsche. Look at that! Oh, oh, this is one for us. So we've got the, the yellow GTS Targa, which I'm super pumped about, and the classic Targa. This is, a, is this is a 70s. It's a 1972 .2, right? Yes, exactly. That I am so S. I'm so excited about this, man. And up, um, yeah, welcome to Switzerland. We're in Geneva this morning because that's where I stayed before we head to Porsche, right? Yes. And uh, so I'm in town because uh, Sasha and I have a have a really exciting, uh, I would say, collaboration. clothing collab. Exactly. Yeah, coming. So you might have seen me wearing jumpers with V10 engines on them. Yes. Right. They're all or a jacket with a big or line. jackets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like the number eight and stuff. That's uh, from Sasha's brand called Eight Js. And um, just b by chance, what, like 12 months ago, or maybe 18 yeah, months think, ago? Yeah, more or less. You like just like saw a video of me, yeah, and friend, I was already wearing your shoes, a, right? A friend sent me a, a video, it's like, yo, this guy is wearing your polo. And I was like, that guy <laughs> is wearing my polo. <laughs> day later, no, a day later, you send, send an email to us on the info. Uh huh. And you're like, yeah, uh, I can't find my size. And I was like, hold on a second, let me Google this guy up because I think I've seen this. I know Mr. this guy. JWW thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then we met at the, um, the at Geneva, the Motor, Geneva Show Motor Show. Yeah. And then, yeah. but anyway, since then, uh, it turns out that we're both massive petrol heads. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we and gotta be. We saw like the clear alignment that we had to yes. do some stuff. So tomorrow we're gonna go to the AJ Studio and talk about our collab and show you guys. Uh, some of the stuff that we've been working on, which is an exclusive, we've been working on this for ages. Uh, yes. I was super excited for that. I have the, I, they are actually in the other bag. Oh no! Because they were at my, like, at, we have two offices, so they were at one office, and now. Are we yeah. gonna have a little, a little peek? We might. We might. Have we a just peak. might. Yeah. We just might. Beforehand, we are uh, in the country of some of the finest driving roads in the world. So we thought, why don't we get a hold of some good cars? No, to be honest, to I think the like the itinerary we're doing today. Yeah. <clears throat> it's probably regarded as, like, the as one of the, of the sickest roads in Switzerland. So Sasha's well hooked up with the guys at Porsche in Geneva. And you just casually phoned up and was like, yo, any cars lying around? Here we are, man. We have arrived at Porsche. Yes, exactly. That I am so, I'm so excited about this, man. We're gonna get to take these off into the mountains with the roof off, the top off. Gonna be like the ultra thing is immersion the old, into this. On the old one, you have to leave the roof somewhere, right? Yeah, on the sidewalk. <laughs> Dude, these are our cars for the. Dude. How long do we have these for? Like two days? Yeah. Wow. All right, I picked mine, James. You picked your. You're straight in with the classic. This thing, oh, it's got the Fuchs on. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, yeah, you're right. Where do you, where do we put this? Well, Mine's a little bit more sophisticated because uh, it retracts away. One of my f my favorite features of this car is the the side profile while it's halfway through converting because this big glass piece is like suspended over here. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And it lo it looks so good. This is gonna be is one hell of a few days. And look how sunny it is. So this is a 1972.2 Targa S. I think these are about 180 brake horsepower. Well, they were back in the day, so if it's well maintained, it yeah, should yeah, still yeah. be around 180 yeah, horsepower. Imagine when it came out, it was like a bullet, right? Yeah, absolutely. For, for that category, obviously. Well, do you know, I think this weighs only just over a ton. Can you just understand just how well kept that car is? I know, it's look beautiful. At that. Look at the tires, everything. It's I assume, look, at, look underneath. This is the sort of stuff I'm interested in. The stuff you don't see and is the bits which, new. I mean, it's so clean. It's so clean. You have to be so careful. This is, I know, I feel like a burden of responsibility right now yeah. for all of this stuff. Yeah. Right, so let's head inside and see what these guys are for us.
Don't forget your suitcase, man. <laughs> Don't forget this. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't even left the dealership yet and we're ready to buy these cars. <laughs> this is so exciting. I haven't been this excited to share content with you guys in quite a while. What do you say, bro? I tried a break right now and it's like, no. <laughs> you haven't got much brakes? No brakes. I might have to brake test a few, a few things. I'll be sure to give you plenty of distance. back in the Porsche. Now we're not actually on the road yet where we're gonna find out what this thing is all about. We've just arrived on the shores of Lake Geneva. This place is breathtaking. We've gone like half an hour and we're already in paradise. But this area is a bit chilled. It's a lot more of a sort of village environment. You've gotta take it steady. But just to be able to have the roof down, I know it's a stereotypical thing to say, but roof down, wind in your hair, there's another level of connection I find. When you take the roof off a car, your senses are heightened. And we haven't even got this thing up to, to speed yet. What this thing is doing to me though, is making me miss my GT3. The gearbox on this is just sublime. Just look, listen to that. It's absolutely, on, on the up, it's like a tone change. Rapidly fast and super silky smooth. Anyway, let's skirt these shores. We've got Sasha in front of me in this classic Targa. This 2.2 litre is popping and banging on the overrun. It sounds so special. This Porsches have their own feel, so I'm really looking forward to sampling the Porsche DNA, trying that car out, trying this car out, and seeing if there's any sort of DNA transfer between these two. It'll be interesting. <laughs> Okay, it's just started raining, so we've nipped into this underground car park to quickly take the roof on Sasha's car. So I remember the guy showed us how to get it off. Yeah, you know I know how to get, get it on. Off. We're good. I just do you have some manual old school. Do you have some wipes? Agents hey, for a living and I. This thing is cool. Okay, so we, we have to take out. This is the roof in this bag, is it? Yes, exactly. All right, so pop it out. Just put it that way. Ah. Yeah. Unping it. I can see why they made these these things electric. <laughs> There's a reason for the evolution. How is it? Yeah, I remember him like banging those out to keep them straight. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Still film the. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. There you go. gonna press a button bro. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks man. <laughs>
proper racing box. I love it. All right. myself on some twisty Swiss roads but of course it's absolutely pouring down anyway it's probably a good time that I uh, give you a few insights onto the uh, overall platform of this car hopefully we're gonna dry out in a minute but just um, wait wait is a thing for me this is still a 911 it's still a fundamental sports car platform even though in target guys to me it is leaning a little more to GT car but of course, with that big glass dome comes big glass weight. With the retractable system and the glass, it's adding another 110 kilograms to the overall weight of this car. Which for a sports car is kind of chunky and makes this thing come in at just over 1600 kilograms. Now, as a Grand Tourer, that wouldn't be so much of a problem. But we all know that with 911 engines, these flat sixes are renowned for having to rev the knackers off them in order to get the sort of performance and emotion out of them. And while that is marginally true, never have I experienced an example of a 911 that has to be wrung out quite as much as this. It's not until five and a half, six thousand 6,000 RPM that the character of the engine is unlocked. And then, I don't know, I find you're running out of poke because you're already right at the very top of the band. You shift around about seven and a half and you're back down again. Now, I'm not saying it's not a lovely engine. The engine itself is fantastic, but that weight that I was just talking about, I can't help but think that has a big chunk of the problem as to why this engine feels a little bit labored compared to other 911 engines that I've tried lately. If you compare the Cabriolet, okay, you're losing some structural rigidity, but I think the weight saving is another 100 kilograms, around about that. Might not sound much, but every little counts. And right now I'm feeling that the engine is just a tiny bit labored. Whether it could do with a bit more horsepower or not, I don't know. But, having said that, when you are right at the top of the band, it sounds so much less. He's just over one ton. I think it's 1,085 kilograms, something like that, and about 180 brake horsepower. There's a lot to be said for power to
have arrived several hundred miles later from Lake Geneva to Gestad. Let's go check out this hotel. Looks pretty baller. Thanks. Fruit tea with cinnamon and cloves. Thanks a lot. Hey, how are you? Hope you had a good journey. Very good. Very good. Yeah, really good. Thank you. It's been, it's been good tonight. You know. We've already had one burger already. Yeah, yeah. We're one, one up in the burger yeah, section, so I'm sure we need any more burgers, man. Yeah, no, we don't need. Check out my room. Super fancy. Welcome to Gestad. So the view is like, well, it's absolutely pouring down. But hopefully tomorrow morning, we'll see blue skies over that mountain range. Look in here, lots of marble and granite and fanciness. Ooh. Looks like Bamford stuff. Is it Bamford? Yeah. Terribly posh. Lovely. Anyway, I'm now uh, about to sit down, make myself a coffee and uh, edit till probably about two in the morning. <laughs> I've over filmed so much today. It's gonna take me an hour just to trawl through all of the footage to remember all of the good stuff. Anyway, gonna give you uh, a bit more of a tour of the hotel room tomorrow morning and then we'll get back on route and end up at the HA studio tomorrow. As always guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.